All right. Good morning, everybody. We're going to talk about the difference between time, tick, and share bar charts today. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> um, got our risk disclosure here. And what I'm going to talk about today about what are the differences between time, tick, and share bar charts, um, which of these best captures the fractal nature of the market. Um, and to show you instances where share bars are not always available and talk about some of my lessons learned. So I have a trade station workspace set up here and I have this chart set on a 1597 tick. This chart is on a 2584 volume or share bar chart. And then this chart here is on a 15 minute. They're all the um, 10 year futures contract, the current one. And I have this bar countdown timer set up here. And what you can see here is on this volume chart, uh, of 2584, that volume represents how many shares. So each one of these bars represents 2,584 shares, okay? Whereas over here on the time-based chart, this is the price movement during that 15-minute time period. This is the price movement during the time that it took to process 2,584 shares. They could be buying or they could be selling. And this countdown timer here will show you um, how many shares are in the current bar that is being processed. And so you can kind of get an idea. If you see the big jumps here, you can get an idea of uh, how fast that market is moving from a share bar standpoint. And you will actually see sometimes there will be so many shares, it will just jump and create, go from bar to bar very quickly in a fast moving market. Um, 10 year, um, today we've got uh, about 905,000 um, shares have been traded today. Now let's look at the tick chart. What this does is each time price moves one tick, it will count those ticks. And so it's 1,597 movements of price change. So if we're looking at the 10-year, let me just expand this out a little bit so you can see the, the, the tick increments. So as we... Let me get current price, where we are at current price. So each time price moves here, and this is on live market, this will increment by one as price goes up and down, up and down, okay? And in some cases, the ticks are moving actually faster than trade station will render. So you might not always see these actually, uh, this timer updating in real time. Um, but it does give you kind of an idea here. So, so this is 1,597 changes in price. So it can be moving one tick, two ticks, but each tick of movement in the price is actually what is displayed here. And um, when you look at the fractal nature of the markets, um, whether you're looking at a time-based chart, um, a volume, or a tick, when you're looking at time, that is your least um, fractal method of looking at the market. Um, if you tick is better 
but the volume based um, gives you the most fractal representation of the market. You will see um, that uh, the same, if you're trading a certain style of trading and you have a certain set of rules, once you optimize those rules on a volume based market, you will see that those that there's very little difference in the performance of your trade plan in using volume-based markets. Um, you get, so you might be plus or minus 1% on a volume-based market. You could be um, plus or minus, you know, 3% on a tick-based using tick-based charts, using your trade plan across different ticks. But when, and when you get to a time-based market, um, you'll see a lot more, your trade plan will vary a lot more based on the actual time you're trading, whether it's on, um, you know, a five minute, a 15 minute, a 60 minute chart, or if you're looking at a daily, weekly, or monthly, you will find that the trade plan, um, because it is less fractal, that you may have to make more tweaks in your trade plan in order to get similar results. So if you're, you know, using different um, odds enhancers, such as uh, trend or uh, RSI, um, you know, Bollinger Bands, whatever methodology you are using, um, you will see that there will be uh, more differences in how you set your trade plan up and how you determine where you want to get in and out of trades um, in the time-based markets. There's just more variation there because it is time. It's not truly representing what's happening in the market like the uh, volume, the share-based charts are. Um, Lisa, mm -hmm. I have a question. Okay. On your timers, your countdown timers, Mm -hmm. uh, they're uh, decrementing. Now that one just reset. Mm -hmm. The other one did not at 1597. Yes, there's something going on with this this morning. Normally this works perfectly. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I even went and double checked the settings. Um, I don't know what, it's almost like there's a, a lag in the communication of the data. Okay. Um, at one point it was this morning, it was doing this earlier and then it seemed to have corrected. It was doing better. So I think I'm just getting some delay from the server. Um, yeah. So I'll have to dig into that further. Um, just wanted to make sure I was looking at it right. So you, you are, you are. Yeah. And obviously it's red, <laughs> you know, so it uh, says, because it, you know, the color will change and it gets close to the, to the switch. Yeah. Yeah. It'll go from black to red to let you know it's getting closer. Um, but for some reason, yeah, this, I don't know exactly what's going on. So, um, so a few things that you're going to find out is that you cannot always get share bar charts. All the Forex markets um, do not have the option for share bar charts. So I'm going to go down here. I'll just look at like Ethereum, US dollar, a crypto. And you'll see that you're going to get this comment here. Data request fails. Share bars are not supported for this um, symbol, the volume-based bars, you can still do the tick um, and you can do the time, but there are no share bars on any of the Forex markets. So it doesn't matter whether you're looking at a crypto or like Aussie US dollar, um, it is not available now, uh, but you can get the share bars on the, um, uh, the futures. So, um, so that's one thing you'll have to understand if you're going to lean toward using share bars. In those cases, you would have to consider using tick. 
Um, the other very important thing that I have learned is I have this linked to these charts. And if I'm going to, I always need to kind of know what my volume is like. So if you look at SPY and Apple, you know, you're at, your volume is at 28 million today. So I had this set up on um, a 25.84 share. If I click on Apple with this on 25.84 share, it will move so fast. You can't, it's, it's like unbelievable. So you, you're going to always have to alter your charts on the slower moving markets before you go to the faster moving markets to prevent having a problem. So if we go in here, studies, data, edit symbol, and I'm going to change this to, uh, let's see, let's just do 50,000 shares. And then we'll go back up a thousand bars. Do you want a fib for that? It's 40, 46, 368. Okay. 46, you said 368? 368. Okay, cool. Thank you. And so even though it doesn't support the data for this, you can see here that it still has this share bar. So when I go and click over here on Apple, we should get a much better result. And so you can see the volume came up. So you can see here. We're waiting for the time-based one to come up. Well, that would have been two good trades there this morning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, it would have been. So, um, and if you kind of want to get um, a feel for um, how things look, one of the things you can do is comparing the time to the volume to the tick is if you kind of align your prices up. So you've got 153 here. And if we adjust this a little bit and kind of try to get the 153s lined up between this chart and this chart, and then we can do the same thing here as well. Let me move this up a bit. That doesn't make sense. I'm on a different price. Okay. I don't have the late data. Oh, see, there we go. Got to get it on today's date. All right, we'll let that load. So um, if you're looking at, um, you know, different volumes, different ticks and times and assets with different volumes, um, it may behoove you to make multiple workspaces um, so that you're not having to switch back, remembering to switch back and forth about the, the volume on those assets um, in order to see what is going on with price. So let's see if we can move these up and marry, kind of marry these. So we get these lined up here, about 53. So, It's always the 
problem with scaling on trade station is getting everything lined up. So you got these all kind of lined up together and you can see that, you know, on the, the time-based chart, you have this big candle here. Um, and that candle was the 1115 candle, right? So you can go here and you can see that you know this candle here which goes from what uh, a high of 153.41 to a low of 152.29 you know, you can see that this is what happened and how price looked doing it using the volume. And so you can see, you know, there's, um, uh, if you're a supply and demand trader and you're looking at volume, you know, and you're looking at supply, looking for supply and demand bands um, on this chart here on the time-based chart, you know, you can see that you would have, let me uh, see if I can get this over so we can see the difference. So this band here goes from 151.92 to 152.50. And you can see here that this band here from 152.54 to 152.43, a much smaller band, and it would able, allowed you to get in and ride this up. So that's another thing about looking at the tick and the volume-based charts is that you can have more opportunities to get in when a market starts trending because you're identifying your supply and demand um, based on the tick or volume instead of the time-based charts. Because if you look here, this band here, until this, um, you had the close of this candle, this band wasn't created, but you actually had the ability to get in right here. So at 11.03. Instead of waiting for a band to be created at 1115 that price hasn't even returned to. Any questions about that? Okay, so um, any asset that can be charted on trade station other than the um, forex the currency pairs um, can you can use the volume or the share bars on uh, tick can be used on everything and the um, obviously you can use time on everything as well and um, some of the things you can do if you're trying to get a similar look for the um, volume tick and time charts, um, you know, if you took this 15 minute chart and you broke it down to say maybe a, um, let's just look at what it looks like on possibly a, um, let's just do, you might have to, like on Apple, you might have to go down to like a 30 second to get something that looks familiar, similar to the volume based chart. Taking a bit of time to load here. When you get down into the low time frames, like the seconds, it does take a bit of time to, to load those. So um, 
some of the other things, if you are using um, a tick based chart and you want to put your set your interval on the radar screen for the tick interval, because maybe you're adding a, a study such as the trade or pattern finder or whatever other study you're interested in tracking for your trade plan, um, you can change the interval and you can do tick, but the radar screen in trade station does not support share bars. So, so you can see here what the, the 30 second looks like. And it does. Uh, does look a bit more similar, doesn't it? So you can see what that looks like. Okay, I've totally lost my timer here. <laughs> oh, now it moved down here. Yeah, something's not right here. Is does it does it move when you move the chart up and down? Is it fixed to the position on the chart? I didn't think it was, but it is moving. <laughs> Maybe it's, sure. maybe it's related to wherever the price currently is. Yeah, might be. Yeah. Just so it stays out of the way. Yep. Yep. So I'm not quite sure. And to be honest with you, I don't, I don't think this, I don't think this looks, look, look at the, you got 5289. There is some serious kind of delay going on on this tick chart. Yes. Uh, so that may have something to do with the trade station server yes uh, let me let me just kill this chart and put it back and see if we can get a better result they, they kind of seem to be in sync now well let's see 96 yeah they do don't they but this doesn't make sense down here at all. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. Um, and I did check that the settings were correct <laughs> on the, the timer. So I'm not quite sure what the deal is. Um, just for information, if TradeStation gets behind, you will at times see that your time down here where it says like 11, 23 and 30 some seconds, you will start to see that this may be 11, 23, but your, um, your actual computer clock may be 11, 24, 11, 25. So that's, that sometimes can be a signal that you've got delayed data, you know, as far as um, getting it from the servers to your system. So uh, just a little little lesson I learned. <laughs> so, um, so any other questions that folks have about um, using the share bar or the tick versus the time charts? Yeah, I've got one, Lisa. On the, on the volume specifically, do you have any guidelines on the selection of your um, quantity? I mean, is, is it just so that it um, moves at something that you can follow or is there something else that you use? Um, so I have seen recommendations um, about, you know, like if, if you're going to do like um, a 200, if you're looking at say like a 240 minute chart, um, you know, and you're looking at share bars, you know, using a FIB number like um, 17,711, 
versus a, um, you know, a tick chart of, you know, like 2584. Um, you know, there's, I've seen some recommendations on trying to marry those, you know, together. Um, but to be honest with you, what I, especially on some of, you know, when you're looking at like spy or, or Apple, like, you know, this, this volume right here, that, that looks pretty good on Apple. Um, if, if we took that down just for fun to kind of what I've seen, some of the rule of thumbs using the, um, 17, 7, 11, I'm sure we're going to see a big difference in how that chart paints candles. <laughs> hmm, not as. Actually, that looks like that would be not bad. Um, but I tend to use the. Um, the higher I'm going to use, if I'm using, looking at a high volume stock, particularly like the fangs, um, I, I would recommend looking at um, share bars, uh, probably either the uh, 10, 946 up to the, um, 17, 7, 11. I would use a range like a range like that. Um, but with the, um, with the, with the ticks, um, you'll see that you're going to, you can see right now you're, you're painting uh, volume share bar bars much quicker, much quicker than you're doing the tick. So you can typically, use a much lower tick. Um, if you've got something that's really high moving, you might have to go as high as 4181 on a tick. But um, somewhere... Be mm -hmm. Something that I've done in times past, and I, well, I still do, I'm setting up and figuring out where I want to trade on a particular market. But I look at the daily volume and figure out how many candles do I want to see a day. Yeah, that's a good point. And divide that number by the number of candles that I want to see a day and then uh, base my uh, chart numbers, the number of bars, whether it's all, well, typically for me, I always use FIBS. Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I choose those closest FIBS to that. And, you know, that gives me an idea. Okay, so I can expect, you know, if I expect, you know, 500 candles a day, uh, then, you know, and I've got, you know, a million uh, you know, a million uh, shares a day. Yeah. Uh, then that gives me a fib number of two thousand or a number of two thousand. So mm -hmm. you know, I I want to see something in around two thousand, which would be what? Uh, probably twenty five eighty four. Twenty five eighty four, fifteen ninety seven. Yeah. Yep. So, so yep, that's a that's a good way to look. I like the idea of how many candles do you want to see. That that's a that's that's worked really well for me in times past. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nice. All right. Yeah, and let's see. Did we have a um, kind of like an average volume field that we can add to the radar screen? I'm not. Uh, there is actually, um, but here again, you don't see that for, for, uh, share bars, but yeah. Yeah. Um, um, actually, I think there's also an average volume, daily volume that you can put on your chart. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got, you've got volume average. So let's just add and customize that and see what we got here on inputs here. Okay. Crows. So this is a 50. Moving average. So. Which would probably be reasonable. Right. 
Yeah. So you can see here, Spy and Apple, they're kind of averaging 2.6 million. So, yeah, that's probably a pretty good way to get a quick snapshot of that. So, and you figured, you know, 2.6 million. And I, I typically like, you know, 500 bars a day. They, they give you a good enough breakup. Yep. Yep. Good point. Good point. Yeah. So that's a way you can do that. All right, guys, we are hitting the end of our time. Any last minute questions before we close this out? Great session, Lisa. Right, you're very Thank welcome. You.